Hello. Today we're joined by someone who shares the same middle name as me, Mr. James Drop Top. Or James Convertible Automobile if you're feeling fancy. That's how things are. And this is Boogie. You gonna introduce him? This is Boogie. We're here with Boogie and James in his bedroom to do his very first interview. How are you feeling, James? See, I don't usually like that question, but but I'm feeling all right. It's a little warm in here. My fan is the only thing because my fucking air conditioning doesn't work. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit hot in here. That's about how I'm feeling. All right. So one thing that I really, really like about your music is that you just write hooks like crazy. Like, you, you write choruses like it's, like, no tomorrow. I want to know, is there a different process to writing choruses for you than writing verses? Yeah, because when I write a verse, I'm just trying to pack as much into it, like, to fit the theme. But when I write the hook, I got to, like, I don't know, you have to have a flow to it. People have to sing along when you write a hook. Um, the verses are more, I could, like, wrap my ass off in them. But the hook, I have to, you know, kind of make it simple so people can sing along. Uh, so it is definitely different. I would say it's a completely different thing, actually. Do you think that uh, do you think that it's like uh, more important to have a better better chorus or a better verse? Uh, if like for me, it's all about how it sounds, like how I, how it makes me feel. But to other people, when they're listening to my music, they're most likely gonna like the chorus because like everyone likes to sing along mm-hmm. to the chorus. If you have a good chorus you know everyone wants to listen the hook, the verses don't really matter as i've heard on the radio plenty of times mm-hmm. um but for me it's all about the feeling i get out of it so both of them are just as important um and to other people i'm sure hooks are important so i just i look at that differently how do you uh how do you keep people into a song when it's a a two or a three verse song do you have to put the same uh, impact into your second and third verse or where you at on that oh yeah you gotta completely switch it up because i've heard songs that are like five minutes and like sometimes i like to listen to it just because you know i'm sitting down doing some shit but like no one wants to listen to a a three verse song or like a like a four or five verse song now everyone's attention spans are like like nothing right now yeah the adhd is just getting so oh it's terrible so so like people like on SoundCloud, make like a minute long songs. Mm-hmm. And those get the biggest, you know what I mean? Because people's attention spans are short and then you could just keep playing the song over and over again. When you're being the guest on someone's song, when you're featured, mm. do you feel some kind of sense of like, man, I just need to tear this shit up because I'm, I'm coming into someone else's fan base. I'm, I'm new here, so I really need to show them who I am. Yeah, that's why I kind of hate doing features because like I always, have to, I always feel like I have to prove myself like no matter what. But when I'm on someone else's song, it's their idea, it's their feeling that they're creating, and then I gotta come and like fit it. So it's hard enough to like, like, you know, prove myself as it is. But then when you're on someone else's song, you gotta really think about the shit you say. But r- when it's a verse for me, I mean, it's easy to write verses. Like I write, I've been writing since I was, I've been writing songs since I was like fourth grade. So writing verses is really fun for me. So I just come on there and kill it. But I do all, I overthink everything. So. When I'm when I'm writing a verse, I just think about oh shit, this person's gonna think this, this person's gonna think that, and that's something I gotta stop. But that's what it is. I want to talk about James Bond, one of your songs. Um, that beat swoosh up is ridiculous. Yeah. First of all, it's just crazy. That's um, that's DJ Young Vamp. He produced that. He's like a he's really big at like flipping stuff. He's like in the Houston scene where they do like chopped and screwed and flip things. So I like the, I love the beat. So I was like, I gotta do that. Um, what, why James Bond? Why, why not someone else? Because I was talking about, I was like, I remember I was in my girlfriend's room, I was going, drop top, James. And then she was like, James Bond. And I was like, I like James Bond. <laughs> so I, I like, didn't even see James Bond until like after that. So I watched it and was like, oh, his car is like called, it's like the Hornet or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he's got like, uh, he always got a sick ass car and like the suit and everything. So I was like, just made sure to rap about that. And it, it turned out sight. But um, with with my old stuff, I don't, I don't know. Like I like it because it's good. But I feel like back then I was more trying to, um, trying to fit in than I am now. Like right now, I feel like I'm becoming more of myself as I as I grow. Um, but like back then, I was just trying to be like, what are other people gonna like? And now I'm more like, what's gonna make you feel like you gotta be an artist? You know.
Yeah, and uh, that's one thing that I noticed too is that uh, it's really interesting because I feel like you've garnered a good a, a good little fan base for yourself, but you're also at a very transitional stage in your musical yeah. career, so people are kind of watching you grow, like, at a rapid pace. Do you do you feel um, like you're you're like going to uh, be able to still go at the same uh, the same rate that you want to with all those eyes on you doing that? Oh yeah, always because I don't. I, I admire people like um, like Frank Ocean or like MF Doom, and they drop music and disappear. They don't they don't give a fuck about what the internet says. They don't care about uh, anyone's opinions. They just kind of make what they want, and that kind of motivates me to do the same. No matter how many eyes are on me, I'm just gonna continue to do do myself because I see people like um, like that are coming up, like say in the rap scene, like you got Lil Tech or whatever. He dropped a song that was on a wave. Mm-hmm. And then he went up, but have you heard of him since? Right. Not really. And that's because he hopped on a wave. You can't do that when if you want to last a long time. So I look at it as more of like an artist standpoint, not so much as like uh, how much attention I'm going to get out of it. That's really interesting because I feel like some of the most relevant artists today, they kind of disappear for a little bit. You look at like K-Dot and J. Yeah. Cole and stuff like that, like two of the biggest rappers in like today's scene. And like you'll go months, maybe a year without hearing a word from them at all. Like, very little social media, very little anything, but, like, then they'll just come out of nowhere with something crazy. Totally, and I respect that a lot more because they're working on what they have to do. And I'm not the biggest fan of J. Cole, but he he just does what he wants to do. I mean, he, he goes away and then comes back and drops something that he thinks is right. Same with Kendrick or, you know, um, Frank, you know, hella people that I, that I admire. They just go away and then they just come back with something that they like and it doesn't even sonically sound the same as like the last thing they put out which means they they're growing you know what i mean mm-hmm. and that's how you could tell someone's growing i think i don't even know how i got that name to be honest what name james drops up james drops up it just came about i was just you know i make weird ass names so like i i like i got another name is seymour peanut brittle seymour is in one name and then hard. hard as fuck bro but i just like putting two names together and then just rolling with it and then it's tight, bro. no i was making my deep i was making my depop account okay and that's when i i put it was like philip drop top and i was like philip is an ugly ass name is not, to, ass not to not to <laughs> shout out to everyone named philip but it's not your fault it's your mom's but like <laughs> you know um what was i gonna say all right, we're back. Um, Hello, we got another mic. Yes, this bitch just popped up. We're double mic'd up on a on a what is it? Monday. Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Tuesday afternoon. Fuck it, Tuesday. That's perfect. It's Tuesday afternoon. That's Tuesday. what I'm talking about. The okay. setup was too perfect. All right. Anyway, so one thing that I think that you do like tremendously well is uh, you you really have nailed the art of uh, presenting something to the internet. I think that's something that a lot of people could look at you as like a reference of how to do right. Damn, um, cool. With like the love boat thing, for instance, I know it was super simple. You were mm-hmm. just sitting in front of this thing that we're sitting in right in front of right now. Yeah. But and I don't know. Like, it was, will, it was the, <laughs> there you go, bro. <laughs> it was just like the way it was posted, like the information given with it and stuff like that. It was super subtle, but it just drew everybody in. You, you put captions in, yeah. which was crazy as fuck. Like, I don't know. It was just like... That's dope. I appreciate that. Yeah, bro. But it was it was like those little type of things that I think like will set someone apart from like the herd of like other artists. Totally. Like That's that, you know? totally how I feel too. Because you got people... I mean, on the internet, it's so easy to just put your song out and be mm-hmm. like, out now. You know what I mean? But yeah. like, you are not going to get anywhere just saying, you know, out now. You have to have uh, like a teaser. You got to have a good cover and a good video, good like visuals. And mm-hmm. um, I think that's what I want to focus on. Like, I want to create like my own universe with my music, you know, because it's the only yeah. where you could escape from real life. You just make shit and put it on the internet, or just you know have your own um, portfolio of things. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I like to um, that's what I like to do with with making music. I just want to put more into it because I see way too many artists just just think that it's enough by dropping and then paying for promotion. Yeah, and I don't want to be like that. I don't I don't want to be a like a rapper. I want to be an artist. So. Yeah, yeah, no. So just like uh, tearing that box away. Yeah, that a lot of people will try and put on top of you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I hate definitely. hate labels so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also think it's a, uh, it's not just like an effort thing. A lot of it goes into uh, like the way you act and like the attitude you go into it with and stuff like that. I see a lot of people who like 
they won't even like uh like hit their fans back or something like that that question stuff on like their posts and stuff like that if you run a brand and someone messages you or comments on it and they're yeah. like oh what size run is this and you just leave them like Bruh, ignored it's me and my like, friends have a lot of conversations about that like how how pretentious you gotta be to not just say thank you or some yeah, shit right. like i've gotten like i pay artists up that are you know like i would say we're on the same level and they just be like you know they leave me on red or something mm -hmm. it's like or damn. ask for like money for like yeah a and it's like, it's, like yeah like, like someone asked 300 dollars for a feature and like, they bro, get the same amount like, of streams you have the same amount of numbers and it's me, like yeah. you know everyone's got to get their money i respect it but mm -hmm. at the same time we can't just do it for the art but i mean hey you got to pay your bills you know all this but um as you were saying like about uh the way people just don't hit their fans back and stuff like that i think that's why these people fail you know what I mean? Or they don't, they only get to a certain point or people don't like them as a person uh, because they're too good for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. No one wants to listen to an artist, especially with like, who's uh, kind of small like me. Like I got like 2000 followers, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, no one wants to follow you. No one wants to listen to what you have to say if you're too big for them, especially at yeah. this level. So I just try to give as much back as I can. Right. No, like once, once you're on that high horse and like you start to garner in like people like paying attention to you and stuff like that, mm. I feel like the second they realize that you're never going to be like down there with them just to like connect with them and stuff like that, it's going to fail. Yeah. No oh yeah, totally. What. And no I'm always, what. I'm always thinking about how people feel because I'm very hypersensitive, mm -hmm. uh, which means that like, I don't know. I, I like just feel the atmosphere in the room and if someone's not having a good time, I'm like, fuck like how am i gonna get them to have right. a good time so that's always important to me so whenever someone says like sends me a paragraph about like what my song has done for them um it's like like damn how do i respond to this in a way that they know that they're appreciated so that's a really big part of uh just i don't know making music for me like uh just talking to people they're people just like i am so how do you uh how do you go about like reeling in things from like the 60s and 70s and 80s and stuff like that i feel like that kind of like your aesthetic has been like blended together just like these like heavy like trips of nostalgia and stuff like that that's dope yeah i just um i just really do what i want like i take a little from from every era like uh the 70s 80s 90s mm -hmm. i like the clothes from late uh 90s early 2000s mm -hmm. like i wear that and in my beats and my music you hear a lot of 80s influence uh i just like just looking back i'm i kind of am an old head for like just old music just mm -hmm. in general um right. i just like that feeling uh but i don't really like just liking shit because it's from the 80s you know what i mean so mm -hmm. some people are like oh this is so 80s yeah I like, like i was it. born in the wrong generation yeah like shit. that's it's not like... the type of person i am i'd way rather be here than in the 80s 80s right. is fucking garbage fuck <laughs> ronald fuck ronald reagan fuck him if he wasn't dead i'd beat his ass anyways uh that's <laughs> that's that's basically all I can say for that. Um, yeah. I... <laughs> I mean that shit, too. I hope the government sees this. Fuck you guys. Okay. Um, uh, another thing that you do that really interests me is you, you take, like, obviously people are going to take inspiration from stuff, whether it be, like, samples, which is something that totally. I feel like you you fall into that category of two especially with the type of music that you like but um whether it be samples or whether it be like whatever like flow beats like yeah whatever yeah but you you seem to take inspiration for your music from other mediums of art whether it be film or television or fucking books or whatever so, no fuck, totally right? bro like i actually appreciate that a whole bunch because i don't like ever hear that and that's basically what it what it is like i i'm a big movie person i love mm -hmm. uh like my favorite movies like 2001 space odyssey i love okay, yeah. i love all yeah, Cooper's crazy. hella shit um donnie darko you know things mm -hmm. like that that's what i get my inspiration from um uh and like lost in translation is i can go on forever whatever right. but um i just love i don't know because music is so like it's already you you know you You've already done what you could have done with it. Like, we're to the point where we're experimenting so much and taking from this genre, taking from this genre. But how about we take from other mediums, right? You ever uh, you ever read the A Very Hungry Caterpillar? Yeah. As a child, uh, yeah. I, the textures, I love the textures. So I, okay. I take the textures and put them on my characters mm -hmm. um, and, sh and things like that. Um, and that's kind of how you can create your own, like, makeshift world. You know, you right, just take right. from other mediums. And I think the point in which you see the most authentic 
uh, type of art coming from a person like yourself is the moment in which they like dip into doing everything themselves. Yeah. So you are the director of your video. You are the creative like director for like the art that's going on all your shit. You're producing, you're writing, right. you're writing every fucking thing. Right. That's like the, the, I love the, the Kanye's and the, you know, mm-hmm. Tyler Creator. Travis and, Scott and all Yeah. That people shit, who yeah. just do shit themselves. Like I used to, um, my friend used to mix my stuff and he, he did it really well, mm-hmm. but, uh, something about me just feels inauthentic. Uh, not only like rapping on someone else's beats, which is what I don't like to do mm-hmm. anymore, but also, um, you know, not having it mixed. And it's just kind of like, I'm a voice on top of, a atmosphere already created i'd rather just right, create right. it all you myself can only look up so many type beats right yeah so like oh my like you're gonna sound exactly like whoever the fuck you exactly are. and yeah I, I came to that conclusion like a year ago they're like man i could rap on these type beats but at the end of the day i'm not gonna sound any better than this mm-hmm. asap rocky type beat right yeah exactly <laughs> and i think the dedicating the type of like time that it takes to learn how to produce and how to do all that type of shit is more beneficial in the long run yeah than taking the time to search and click through all these other things that other people have made not yeah. to downplay what other people make and stuff because like if you're already out here producing and you label something as a type beat like more power to you you know right like, right good job you made something but like as like an artist i think that like running everything yourself to the best of your ability because some people aren't going to be able to do every single mm. little thing but like everything you're capable of is like the best way to possibly do it yeah oh totally i just feel so free when i do it i feel like you can't tell me shit when i'm doing it you know what i mean like uh my whole goal is to never have to depend on anyone and of course it's good to have other people in your circle but um just i don't ever want to have to depend on someone you know send them uh like hey can you send me a beat can you send me this because at the end of the day the only person who knows what i want a hundred percent is me so i have to do that myself you know what i mean and there's a lot of people who have producers who are really good at making mm-hmm. things for them but i've never really came across that uh i just i just feel more like i'm creating my own universe if i do it all myself yeah no definitely like, we went to i forgot where it was we went to wendy's and bro was just munching we were high i think that day i can't even say anything i put my fries inside of my ice cream and just Okay, nah, like, like it was, it sounded cool in theory, right? But trying that shit is like the frosties. Yeah, I put all my fries because I was, I was all gone. Of it? Like you were, all you of put it? all of it, and then okay. you were. No, I was, <laughs> no, I was, cr- I was gone, right? So I was gone as fuck. I just poured the fries. I was like, damn, people, people be scooping it. Like, fuck it, let me just dump it all in. I mixed it all in like a concoction, and Eric was like. I, I brought who it was. Someone was like, "What the fuck are you doing, bro?" I was like, "It's it's kind of good. It was not good. <laughs> I was just too prideful." Yeah, lying to yourself. Yeah, it's decent, it's, bro. it's good, bro. My masculinity got the best of me. Yeah, no, I got it. Got the best of me. I was weird. No, it, it's good, bro. I swear, I swear. Trust me, dog. It's and, look good, everything bro. I do is good, man. <laughs> Trust me, I'm a man, bro. I swear. <laughs> That's the type, I hate those type of people. No lie. Was there like a moment when you were a kid when you like heard a song or an album and you were like, "Holy shit!" Like I want to do that. Yeah, on um, my uh my uncle's Xbox that he gave me, the only two albums on there, like he had his album saved on there, it was Carter Three, okay. uh, Lil Wayne, and Eight Ways to Heartbreak, mm-hmm. um, Kanye West. And to those day, to this day, those are my favorite, like some of my favorite albums ever. And like I used to listen to Eight Hundred Eight to Heartbreak, like uh, the song Paranoid specifically, mm-hmm. and I would just be like, "Oh my god, this is this is beautiful!" Like that made me want to make music. I wasn't like, I don't know, I don't know how old I was, but that shit really inspired me. Um, and I think that made me want to make music. Right, right. Has it always been like kind of a knack for you to like write and like stuff like that? Well, when I was young, um, I I. I don't know how to stop talking in class. Mm-hmm. So I would get detention a lot uh, just for talking. I don't, I'm not like a badass kid or nothing, but I would just talk and get put in detention. And uh, under my desk, everywhere, every time I would sit there was this uh, dictionary. And the only thing I liked to read was the dictionary. And then I'd rhyme words that were in the dictionary with like words that I know. So like, I don't know, ever since then, it was just like a, I don't know, like a nerdy type thing that I like to do, but that made me like want to write verses. Like I used to write right. verses out of like words I didn't even know until then, yeah, which yeah. I thought was, I, I mean, that's pretty, it was pretty fun. Let's say it. Uh, James Drop Top. Yes, sir. AKA your mom's. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Your mom's. Your mom's. Your, your mom's. 
dead boyfriend? No. Your mom's 19... <laughs> 1998 Toyota Corolla, bitch. So I just, <laughs> your mom, James Convertible Automobile, uh, James Harden, uh, James Charles, uh, James 1998 Toyota Corolla, whatever car you want to call me. I'm a, I'm a automobile. That's what it is. Old people names are the most fire shit in the world, bro. My car's old name was Doris. My fish's name is Bartholomew. Bartholomew is garbage. Okay, but <laughs> old people names are 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 cool and everything. You know what I mean? Like, like. But have you ever seen a motherfucking named Chad? Yeah, bro. Who Fuck looks at their baby and thinks that's a Chad? Like that is a a fucking Chad. Like who does that? You you are a sick human. The child protection services need to take you if you if you're a mom and you named your kid Chad, give that kid away, bro. You cannot take care of him. You just can't. What is Chad short for? Like Chadwick. Chad, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, stop, no, stop, Chadwick, stop, bro. Stop. Stop. We're done. <laughs> We're done. Chad is not short for Chad. You're lying. I promise. Put that you. on King Neptune. Put it on King Neptune. Bro, I put it on. I put it on. King Neptune. Bro, I put it on Boys Who Cry. Isn't that the... the What's the band wrong? who performed at Pearl's birthday, like, bro? It's you, girl. On your 16th birthday. And then uh, I don't know the rest of the song, but it makes me cry. It makes me cry. Alright. To cry is a bop. I wish someone did that for me on my 16th. We'll do it for you. Wait, you can have him do it for you on your 18th birthday. Okay. Yeah. Damn. I'd we'll we'll organize it. I would be so flat. <laughs> um, all, right. all right. And then uh, last but not least, what can uh, the ex the people people expect from James Drops up in the coming months and stuff? Um, a a whole universe just of things that I like to do, um, that I could feel. And uh, a lot of music. I want to make clothes. I'm gonna make. Uh, I got stickers. I want to throw an event. A lot of. I just want to make my own world. So, with whether that happens in a couple months or a couple years, it's gonna happen. So, uh, that's what I say. Hi. All right. Well, big thank yous to uh, Mr. Dropsop for letting us come into his bedroom and. Uh, big thank you for interviewing me. Appreciate yeah, it. man. And a big thank you to uh, Boogie for just being him. He's kicking it. He's just straight chilling. He doesn't have nothing to say. He does not fuck with you. Boogie, look, stop hitting him, bro. <laughs> Boogie's about to... Ugh, Boogie got the weaves. <laughs> All right, tight. Thanks, guys. Cool. It's all about you, girl. On your 16th birthday. And it's all about you, girl. About you, On your 16th girl. birthday. Come on, Took a blunt to the face, I feel like CGI <laughs> Get the cash, whip flash, you won't see me die Light headed on the plane, it feel like you a foe <laughs> Room spinning, I be winning shit that you don't know <laughs>